Yorkshire. From its dramatic coastline in the east, by the moors, the wolds and the industrial heartlands, to the rugged Pennines and rolling dales in the west, it's a photographer's paradise. Thousands of people flock to this part of the world every year in search of photogenic gems. But in a time where there's more photographs taken every three days than in the whole pre-digital era, it's getting more and more difficult to get that unique shot. My name is Tom, but most people know me as the flat-capped photographer. I know Yorkshire like the back of my hand, and in this series, I intend to take you off the beaten track to find some hidden photography locations, whilst imparting some useful photography hints and tips along the way. In this episode, I'll be exploring Yorkshire's capital, the majestic and historical city of York. Along the way, I'll discover some hidden passageways, unique architecture, and wildlife in the heart of the city. Along the way, I'll impart some useful photography hints, tips and advice, and hopefully come back with a set of unique photographs to share with you. Welcome to Hidden Yorkshire, with Yorkshire Photo Walks and the Flat Cap Photographer. The city of York is one of the many jewels in Yorkshire's crown. From Clifford's Tower to the Minster, and from the Minster to the Shambles and the Ewes Riverside, it's one of those picturesque cities that draws photographers and tourists in general from miles around. If you're interested in historical architecture and just all-round general quaintness, then it's a city that you just have to visit for photography purposes. But with it being such a hustling, bustling city, people take photographs of these iconic locations on a daily basis. And this series is all about helping you to create new and unique photographs of these magnificent locations. So I'm going to introduce you to five hidden spots in the city of York that I think are well worth mentioning because they may not be as famous as those sites that we've just discussed, but I think they're worth putting on the map. Our journey begins in a quiet, secluded spot just on the outskirts of the city. This is York Cemetery. I often find when I'm exploring city centre locations that the crowds of people and the noise and the hubbub often just get a bit overwhelming and I want to escape. As macabre as this sounds, one of the places that I will often look for to do this are graveyards and cemeteries. They're often very close to the city centre itself and offer this paradise of relaxation in amongst the hubbub of the city. York Cemetery is no different, it's less than 15 minutes walk from the city centre, and as I walked through the gates I just felt this calming sensation as the greenery opened up before me, and the sounds of the birds in the trees just emanated through the atmosphere and cut out all of the traffic noise that I've been used to in the city. 
I found myself walking through these beautiful green glades and yes, you're sharing the place with dead people but it's just one of those places that has this atmosphere to it that I really enjoy. The beauty of York Cemetery is that it has various different aspects to it. There's brilliant wildlife habitats. I'm sure if you went there with a long lens you'd be able to get some fantastic photographs of birds and maybe a few squirrels jumping from branch to branch. I didn't have my telephoto lens with me, but what I did have was my 35mm f1.8 lens. And what I found myself doing was picking out details, specific graves within the graveyard that often were overgrown by ivy and other plants and other greenery. And I was isolating those with the contrast of the light that I had on the day and a very shallow depth of field. I often find that opening your lens right out to quite a wide aperture helps you to channel people's eye to specific areas within the frame. Graveyards and cemeteries can often be really busy with lots of greenery, trees, various different layers of gravestones here, there and everywhere. And by shallowing that depth of field down and utilising the light, if you're lucky to have some, like I, I did when I visited, it just gives the eye something to channel towards. And instead of going off at different tangents, looking at various different aspects of the busyness of the frame, it channels the attention and allows you to look at what it is that the photograph is made for. I'm going to show you a few of those photographs that I took at York Cemetery now and hopefully you will see that I managed to do that, fingers crossed anyway. And then we'll move on to our next location as we explore the hidden side of York. Unless you're a student, I would probably argue that walking through a university campus wouldn't necessarily be high on your list. Even if you're walking into town, then university campuses tend to be a bit on the outskirts and you find the most direct route and pass them by. And that's what many people will do with York University campus. But if you were to step away from that main route and meander your way through the lakes and ponds and walkways, you would find a world that was unique and also very photogenic indeed. Before filming this video I'd never been to York University campus and quite frankly then I didn't really have a need to because I didn't study at York University and when I go to York I tend like everybody else to head towards the centre. But it really does pay to wander through the grounds. The ponds are lined with unique architecture, almost brutalist in style and in contrast to that, you get these weeping willow trees overhanging the water and lovely little grassy parkland areas. I found myself going for that sort of contrasty look in my photographs, juxtaposing the architecture with the nature, which creates a really nice story within the photographs that you make. I was really lucky that there was 
crystal clear blue skies when I was there and wonderful reflections in the water. One of the things that many people will say in photography in terms of composition is never to have your horizon line dead centre in the frame. But when it comes to photographing reflections, I think that that's completely wrong and you should do exactly that. Because then we emphasise the symmetry of the shot, having equal amounts of reality and reflection to really bring out that simplicity and also the symmetry of the shot that you're trying to achieve. If you were to position the horizon line slightly up or slightly down, then that symmetry would be lost and, for me, the reflection wouldn't be as impressive. The other thing that York University campus is brilliant for is working with lines. When it comes to anything architectural, then lines are absolutely key to formulating your photographs. I always find that finding a line to follow is usually a good starting point in terms of composing a photograph. Once you've found where it goes, you can work out where you want your focal point to be positioned in the photograph. Especially with the big York University Central building, which was almost like a spaceship that had landed on the side of the lake. I found that the walkways were absolutely fantastic for not only leading your eye in, but also creating this hidden intrigue almost tempting the viewer of the photograph to walk through and into the rest of the frame, which is always a really good way of getting people not only to look at your photographs, but also creating that intrigue and interest to keep them interested in the photograph as a whole, rather than looking at it and thinking, oh, it's all right, and then moving on. I'll share with you my photographs from York University campus, which I have to admit are some of my favourites from my day in York. And it was a complete surprise because when I went to York University, I thought, well, actually, it's just a university campus. How good could it be? But it ended up being my favourite location of the whole day. Although York Cemetery and the University campus are on the outskirts of town, I highly recommend you taking a few extra hours out of your day to go and visit them, because they are absolutely fantastic for photography and completely unique from the rest of the city itself. And let's face it, they're only a 15 to 20 minute walk away, so it's not like it's going to take you hours to get out there. You could even hop on a bus for five minutes if you wanted to get out to them, it's that accessible. We're now going to move into the centre of York itself and get into the nitty gritty of hidden locations within the city walls for our next three locations. One of the many hidden quirky things that York is famous for is its little alleyways and passageways between the main thoroughfares, which in themselves are quite quaint. They're known locally as snickleways or yards, and for our third hidden location in the city of York, I've picked out two of these yards that I think are well worth visiting above all of the others just for photography purposes. They are called Coffee Yard and Lady Peckett's Yard. Unless you know where to turn, these yards and snickleways can be extremely difficult to find. They're often just little doorways off the main thoroughfare 
that you just walk past thinking it was the alleyway to somebody's house. But in reality, they'd lead you into this wonderful hidden world. Both of these yards that I'm featuring here are flanked by Tudor-style buildings with black, dark wooden structures and white plaster walls in between, which creates fantastic contrast for photography. Once you've meandered your way through and you're opened out into this space surrounded by these quirky architectural features and often signs that look really old and archaic, you feel like you've stepped back into Victorian times. When I was there, I was trying to pick up on some of these historical features. And one of the best ways I find to do this is by turning our photographs black and white. Not only does it really emphasise that contrast in tones between the stark white and stark black of the architecture, it also creates that feeling of old-fashionedness, if that's a term. We often associate black and white photographs with early photography because, of course, in the early days of photography, black and white was our only choice before the advent of colour. So it takes us back in time in our subconscious mind, and by looking at these oldish scenes, it creates this wonderful connotation of being in the heart of York in days gone by. In order to find our penultimate hidden location in York, it's a little bit like looking for one of the Snickleways. This place is tucked away in a little enclave, behind a gate, again off one of York's main shopping streets, Goodrum Gate. It is Trinity Church. It's tucked underneath the shadow of York Minster, which towers behind it, but once you enter this little churchyard surrounded by houses and other buildings on every single side, it's like stepping into a little oasis away from the main thoroughfare of York City Centre. It's a beautiful way, like the cemetery that we looked at earlier on, to escape the hubbub of the city. If you are going to this location to take photographs, I would recommend that you contact them first of all to make sure that it's open. It does have set opening hours, but these can be unpredictable due to the availability of volunteers to open the church. And it just so happens that when I went, it was very much locked, even though it said it was open on Google Maps. So it is worth checking out. Thankfully, I did have some photographs from an earlier trip that I will share with you in a moment. Because the church is surrounded by this area of greenery, there are plenty of different angles from which you can get really interesting picturesque photographs of Trinity Church. One of my favourites was looking up the pathway from the road. Outside the front of the church there was a tree which seemed to frame the scene nicely. It also acted as a bit of a layer in terms of providing depth into the photograph. When you go to a location that's quite confined as the Trinity Churchyard is, it pays to look around for different angles. When it comes to formulating a photograph, it's good to think in terms of layers, in terms of how you can build those up to create depth, interest, intrigue and context within your photograph. Sometimes elements in the foreground can act as blockers but if you move around and try out different angles, sometimes a blocker in one angle can work as a lead or way of looking into the photograph to provide a bit of depth from another angle. Whilst I was looking around the churchyard at Trinity Church, I also found some interesting angles looking around at the buildings around the church as well, which created interest. 
although I was going to photograph the church originally because I had a look round and found different angles, I found different areas of interest that I wasn't necessarily going out to photograph in the first place. One of my favourite photographs from the trip, which you'll see in a moment, was looking through the window into the church, which included some reflections from what was behind me as well. This idea of layering came into practice there because I had the lead on the windows, breaking up the scene into different compartments. Uh, but I also had that juxtaposition between the inside and the outside, which gives you a bit of depth in quite a compacted space. I also had a look inside the church, which is always subtly lit by candles. Picking up details in these situations can really add to the atmosphere of the shop. And what I found I was doing when I was there was slightly underexposing my photographs. And what that does is it pulls out the highlight detail from the candle that I had in the frame and also the stained glass window, which was slightly out of focus in the background. Having these split focal points just helps again to add depth, create interest within the photograph and also pre create that atmosphere as well in terms of the difference between light and shade. We've now reached our final destination on this journey to discover five hidden photography locations in the city of York. In terms of this one, it's not necessarily the subject that's hidden, more the angle from which you can photograph it from. To get to it, it meant finding another hidden passageway and walking onto York's famous walls. The subject in question is York Minster. Okay, obviously not that hidden. In fact, it's probably visible from most places across the city of York. But the location that I was aiming for was a place where I don't think very many people get photographs of York Minster from. And I think it's a well worth visiting this site to get that unique angle. Most people, when they photograph York Minster, will stand directly underneath it to get the main entrance and the impressive towers at one end, or maybe down the side near the column to get a wide vista of the building in all its glory. But I was going for a more secluded little spot, so I walked along the walls to just above a pub beer garden of all places, where I think one of my favourite views of York Minster of all time materialises through a gap in the trees. Of course, we're on the York Wall, so many people will walk past this view, but maybe not think to stop and photograph it. The beauty of this viewpoint is that you get layers of York in front of the camera. You start off with the elegant gardens of the Georgian houses that sit underneath the Minster, then you get the houses themselves, and then above that you get the minster towering into the sky above. Not only does it create these three layers of interest and intrigue, it also provides an alternative view on the history of York through the ages through which the city has developed, which from my perspective creates a really interesting story behind the picture. The famous picture itself is coming up for you in a moment, but what I must stress at this point is that when you go to any city, 
It pays to have a look around through every little nook and cranny and down every little passageway and street, especially in a historical city like York, because no matter where you look, you never know what photogenic gems might jump out at you that are unexpected but yet absolutely fantastic. I hope these five locations in this video have given you food for thought, so next time you visit the city of York, you'll have plenty to keep you and your camera busy. I'll leave you now with the final photographs from my trip finding five hidden locations in York. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon. If you'd like to learn more about photography in amazing locations like we've visited today, then check out YorkshirePhotoWalks.com. Yorkshire Photo Walks provide expert photography tuition to all levels of photographer on short walks through inspirational and unique Yorkshire locations. Don't just photograph Yorkshire, experience it with Yorkshire Photo Walks.